Golf Sierra Echo Hotel Kilo, Blossom Town, passing message. Uh, Golf Sierra Echo Hotel Kilo, request taxi for a minute's ground on Alpha 1. Hi, I'm Elliot. I'm a trainee here at Skybourne Aviation Academy, and today I'm here with the CEO of Skybourne, Lee Woodward. Obviously, big thank you because um, Elliot is today um, representing the Royal Aeronautical Society's Young Persons Committee. Thank you, Lee. So the first question is, could you give me a brief overview of your aviation career to date and also describe what has led you to where you are today? So my background in aviation, um, 29 years in the business, and I started my career in much the same place that you're in now. I was a cadet pilot with British Airways in their academy in 1989 and graduated 23rd of November 1990. Um, started life, I was very, very lucky, started life with BA on the 757. Three months later, uh, learned to fly the 767 and three months after that, uh, started my ETOPS long range transatlantic training. So in those days, I mean, you know, I was 24 years old and found myself you know, second in command of a wide body jet. Um, incredible um, fleet to be on. I then moved on to the 747-400. I moved into training um, and eventually I left British Airways in 2003. Uh, an enforced departure, I would say, uh, because I lost my pilot medical at that time um, and started a career with the then CTC Aviation in Southampton. Um, two years later, got my license back, but decided I'd forged a new career with CTC and then helped with the fellow directors of CTC grow that business, eventually selling the company to L3 in July 2015. Um, after a couple of years um, wondering what I was going to do with the rest of my career, myself and the other two founders of Skybourne formed Skybourne, literally from a blank canvas, and built what we have around us now, a 30,000 foot training center with nine aeroplanes, two simulators, um, capable of training 120 trainees a year. So that's it in a nutshell, really. Um, that's my career and that's what got me here. What do you think the most exciting parts of being a pilot or involved in flight training are? So the most exciting bit about being a pilot um, always sounds a bit trite when you say this, but it's true. It's the essence of why I did, I went into it, and it's what I believe today. Um, I love the fact that you're flying in an airliner, a really sophisticated piece of equipment. Um, I love the camaraderie with your fellow pilots and engineers and ground staff and cabin crew etc etc flight planning team i love all the things that go into making um, a success a successful trip for me to be because there's an enormous amount goes into it and i love the sense of responsibility genuinely uh, the feeling of piloting an aeroplane whether you're second in command as the first officer or indeed as the captain of piloting an aeroplane something like a 747 400 for example 402 passengers and 20 plus crew um, so it's all of that um, i love the excitement um, of not only operating that aeroplane but you know flying pushing back in london and flying to an entirely different culture um, it, it, you know you almost can't describe it and, and i still feel like that today so i've been in the business 30 years and i still think it's the best it's the best career as far as training goes um, i think you've got to have a passion and a leading a leaning towards wanting to teach um, i personally love it i think it's so rewarding to take somebody in a simulator or in an aircraft and try to improve their ability or their knowledge, whatever it may be, whether it's in the classroom, simulator or an aircraft, it's the same thing. And then the challenges around that, because we all learn in different ways. And so a good trainer will adapt their, their teaching style. Uh, and, and really you feel, a, 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 honestly, a massive sense of achievement when you take somebody from here and you, you take them to there. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. What has been the highlights of your career to date and do you have further aspirations that you wish to achieve? So right back to the beginning, uh, it sounds a bit poetic, but it's true. Uh, waiting for the letter to come through the envelope, through the letterbox to tell me whether I'd got a position on the cadet program. Um, that was just, I can't tell you how excited I was to, to get that uh, from British Airways. To start the training, having never had any 
previous flight training experience at all before. Um, so the training was amazing. And then base training on the 757, the first time you take an airliner out to a remote location, we happened to go to Shannon. Uh, six of us, trainees and three instructors, flying circuits, just takeoffs and landings in an empty 757, as was for me, for you. It might be an Airbus, it might be a 75, who knows. Um, and then really your first line flight, my first line flight was to Lisbon, I shall never forget that. And then transatlantic training on the 76, and then finally I think the 747. Um, my first departure out of Heathrow, I max takeoff weight to Hong Kong. Uh, genuinely was so exciting and then so lucky to fly the IGS approach into Kai Tak. The airport was going to close three weeks later, so I was so lucky to have done that. Um, and then the transition then on from uh, into training and command and then all my time with CTC Aviation, that was a very special period. Uh, building what was probably the world's largest independent flight training school and now this, Skyborne. Um, to do something like Skyborne is hugely rewarding because you sit with a blank canvas and you use your experience to genuinely, genuinely um, design something that's better than you feel is out there and, and I mean that without any discredit to our competitors we're really going out of our way to try and take everything up several notches and in terms of the future um, I don't think it's about growth necessarily I do see Skyborne perhaps having one more uh, training center in some other location outside of the UK potentially um, and then just making it as good as it can be getting it better and better and better and potentially the drone operation that we've recently announced. I'm really excited by that. And then our private jet business, which is going to start in the new year. So lots going on, uh, lots of exciting stuff. So where do you see the aviation industry 30 years from now? I think we'll see a reduction in the super large aircraft like the 380s. I don't think that's going to be the trend. I think we'll see a reduction in aircraft size to, in the airline world to more medium uh, to short to, or smaller aircraft. So sort of typically everything from the Airbus say up to uh, 320 to the 350 from the Boeing 737 to the 78 that kind of thing. So I, see we'll, I think we'll see an increase in frequencies and slightly less, less large aircraft. Um, obviously the development with electric aircraft uh, I, I think that's a big growth area. Um, so, you know, we've invested in 10 aeroplanes, Boeing, have, uh, sorry, Airbus have said they will have their first uh, commercial airline, airliner flying by 2050, uh, 2030 rather, electrically powered. I think the UAV market is set to be huge, so unmanned aerial vehicles, and obviously we're hopefully moving into that with this commercial drone operation. Um, I suspect, as we're seeing right now, uh, post-COVID, I think we'll see a growth in business and corporate jet travel. I can see that sector growing and I reckon cargo will continue to grow. I think the way we shop online and the growth we're seeing in the logistics business, I, I can't see that um, doing anything other than get bigger. That's, that, that's my view. But 30 years is an awful, an awful long time to try and estimate what's going to happen. But there you go. So what sort of qualities do you look for in a pilot, both today and in the future? Okay, good question. Um, well, you're here. You're one of our cadets. You've been through the selection process. You know what we're looking for. Um, key aspects, motivation. I think it's a career you absolutely want to have to do. And I think being motivated and being able to demonstrate that, whether it's describing it in an interview or showing it through perhaps some of your hobbies or whatever. So motivation is key. Um, strong sense of responsibility, that's what we're looking for. Um, so people who are not gonna shy away from the responsibility of carrying passengers and crew, etc. I think you've got to have the aptitude to do it and you've got to be suited to the role as well. So, you know, it's the kind of uh, job that maybe excites you and motivates you, those things I've, I've already mentioned. Um, in today's environment, 
I think you need to have a strong business awareness as well. You know, gone are the days where you're just a driver of an airframe. I think airlines are looking for much more from their pilots these days, so a good commercial or business awareness, understanding that the decisions you take on, on the line are not, have not only got to be safe, of course, um, but they've got to be efficient and they've got to be in the interests of the, uh, of the company's sort of commercial aspirations, but safety is always first. I think you need to be a team player. Um, there may only be two people on the flight deck, uh, but you're part of a huge team. And when you start flying in the airline, it's very, very apparent how the integration with those other team members uh, is, is so critical. So they're really the qualities that we look for in our cadets, and they're the qualities that, from experience, I know lend themselves to airline operations. What piece of advice would you give to someone about to embark on their aviation career? So first of all, I think you've got to be very clear in your mind um, why you're coming into the business. So what is it that motivates you? Back to that point again. So what motivates you? Why do you want to do it? You'll be very, very clear that it's, you're coming in for the right reasons. Um, other piece of advice I would give is research the role. So make sure that it's, it's not just a fanciful understanding or, 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 or ideal of the job, have a really good uh, realistic expectation of what the role of an airline pilot is. Um, I think you've always got to be flexible uh, because things change. I mean, here we are now in this middle of this COVID crisis, just nine months ago, the industry was booming. And in my 28, 29 years, I've seen two Gulf Wars, I've seen the 9-11 terror attacks, I've seen SARS, I've seen the global financial crisis, and now this. And those pilots that remain flexible and just almost sort of go with it um, um, are the ones who tend to ride it a bit better. I think if you're just coming into the business, um, research. So do your research, find out who are the, what, what are the best training schools out there, and then when you've narrowed it down to say two or three, Go and see them, go and see those schools, ask all the probing questions. How do they deliver their training? Are they running a valid selection program, a meaningful selection program? Um, understand their training philosophies, understand their relationships with airlines. Yeah. So do as much research as you can, your due diligence, and then pick the school that suits you. I think that is super important. You will find during that process that you will be more suited to one environment or another. And I think it's very, very important. Much like choosing a university, people always say, go to the university, do the course that you feel comfortable doing. I think that is really very, very important. Um, and then once you apply yourself, once you go into training, then sorry, apply yourself fully. Yeah get the maximum out of that training course, listen to the instructors, listen to the team leaders, follow your peer group um, and do the best you can. Yeah. And don't fret, don't fret too much about the future um, because if you're with a good organization, they'll help you develop through to those, to those career goals that you may have. You know, we have a team here who's dedicated to working with airlines to ensure our graduates get a placement. And it doesn't always work out the way you expect, but staying flexible, staying adaptable, I think is the way to do it. And then finally, you know, maybe, maybe you're a student out there who's not done too well in their A-levels, for example, and yet you want to come in to be an airline pilot. Well, look at the schools like ourselves that run degree programs. It's not the be all and end all if you didn't quite get the A-levels you were hoping for. You could come into Skybourne and still get a first class honours degree as well as a commercial pilot's license and enter the career. So that would be my advice, uh, anyone thinking of coming into, into the business right now. Thank you, Lee. And on behalf of the Royal Aeronautical Society Young Persons Committee, thank you very much.